TV International. Indeed, a very touchable um, promotion that reminds us uh, of uh, the old days, the days of the launch of our channel and uh, how he did contribute in many ways uh, with us uh, by uh, the promotion, by doing programs and by uh, actually teaching and mentoring uh, many, many of uh, um, the presenters here um, uh, that they were lucky enough uh, to be taught by Mr. Uh, Islam. Um, how, how do you see this, uh, Ms. Hadayit? Uh, it's very moving, very yeah, touching, indeed. very touching. Uh, I can't believe, you mm. know, I mean, I was watching and uh, I was very moved. I can't tell you his voice. Mm and uh, the excellence of the presentation mm. and the ch choreography of the presentation really oh. uh, magnificent indeed and um, those were the days yes mm. yes those were the days also mr islam uh, did present a program here on Altim international that i do remember myself uh, about uh, it was uh, called generation talk and it was about the, the um, talk between different generations and uh, how do you see that the idea of the program that he had himself to, that uh, he well, presented? Well, he was years. extremely intelligent, mm. extremely witty and extremely knowledgeable as his colleagues and friends mm. said. Uh, I find it uh, natural for him to find innovative topics. Mm. Uh, and this program that he organized was very innovative. Yes. Uh, also, it's good because, you know, you need uh, a dialogue between generations because mm. each generation has its own specifics. Mm. So I think it was ahead of time also. Yes. I is. hope you can repeat that program. Yes, because as, as um, uh, we have been saying that Mr. Islam was a pioneer because there were not many uh, presenters who can uh, perform or uh, doing documentaries and um, doing programs and uh, on television and in the, on the radio um, with in, in English language. So uh, he was a pioneer and not only uh, by um, presenting programs, but he was a mentor and uh, professor for uh, many of yes. uh, the presenters uh, here as well, uh, which uh, m might not be known by uh, many of our uh, viewers. Yes, this is amazing, the point of his... Uh, training and yes. teaching and that was a link between generations of only. course because of course he, yes. he he trained younger generations indeed and many younger many, gene many generations, generations indeed. and it's amazing because I get so many comments on Facebook from yes. announcers of Nile TV indeed. and others who are in the media business mm. and directors of programs who tell me that they knew him personally mm -hmm. and that he trained them or that they directed programs for him on mm. Nile TV. Yes. So this is so satisfying for the people who mm -hmm. are still alive and yes. looking at his legacy because I think his legacy is extremely rich and he was teaching at uh, Misri University radio and TV and I, I hope they can uh, innovate a course by yeah. his name in which they can include in that course uh, so many programs that mm. he made. I don't mean that they should air the full program but you know clips from yeah. programs and teach the younger generation how to be a great broadcaster. Indeed. And I think he was on the level of Walter Cronkite. Mm -hmm. And during the October war, I do recall mm. that he used to tell me that Walter Cronkite was with me. Walter Cronkite uh, did so and so and so. We went together to uh, shoot that uh, event. Uh, mm. So even on the level of the international level, mm. uh, he was uh, extremely competent. Mm -hmm. And I think that if uh, Misri University uh, innovates a new course uh, by on his mm. name or gives a chair in his name that would be very important mm. uh, indeed and uh, also uh, to shed more light about uh, mr islam we are joined over the phone by mr nader gohar our radio broadcaster and journalist good morning mr gohar good morning 
Uh, sir, can you shed light about uh, your relationship with uh, Mr. Mohammed Islam? Yeah, uh, Mohammed is a friend. Uh, I think the first time I met him was like 1982 or 83. Yes. And he he had a, a very warm personality. Indeed. He always smiled. Uh, I just look uh, at his profile picture on Facebook. Yes. And look at the smile. It's it's something I will never forget. He smiled politely on me, uh, and that made me absolutely delighted when I meet him. Yes. He was also uh, a funny person. Uh, you know, as, as my office was uh, the next building to Maspiro where Radio Cairo yes. is located, Mohammed was passing several times a week mm -hmm. and always tells me some funny stories happened at the studio in order to reduce the stress from uh, work. I always uh, loved his appearance at my office and I, I, I can tell you stories and stories about him and, uh, you know, he he loved the English language. Everybody who knew him know that he was uh, helping me in a, in a project I had with BBC television. Yes. And uh, it was dubbing BBC TV documentaries into Arabic. We were uh, isolating the scripts and, and finding talent to narrate the documentary in Arabic. Mohammed was supervising the translation and trying to make uh, the talents to talk mm. in Arabic with like an English atmosphere yes. in mind, which was very difficult. Mm. And one day he came out of the recording studio and I told him, Mohammed, I'm fed up of BBC. They mm -hmm. gave us a hard time for a uh, fast delivery and their video tapes arrived mm. late, looking sheets, uh, the same doesn't match, actual time code. So please have a look at the letter, the letter I wrote yeah. for BBC. And Mohammed read the letter and told me, it's very good to express uh, your matter and to, to, to yeah. inform them about the difficulties we facing. But please, time when you write to BBC in London, try to write in English. Actually, my letter is in English. <laughs> but not the English of Mohammed. It's mm. like he was caring too much about the English language and he was in love with it. Mm. Indeed. Unfortunately, yeah, the last few years, due to my travel out of Egypt, most of the year, we only see each other a few times. Mm -hmm. But a uh, year. But I kept I, his sense of with, with him. We were always speaking that back up again mm. due to his lovely personality. Of course. Yeah. Uh, Mr. Nader Gohar, uh, our broadcaster and journalist, uh, thank you very much uh, for uh, your precious uh, input. And uh, as uh, we have been saying that, Mr. Islam did present a very interesting program here on ITV International, which was Generation Talk. Let's have a look. You have an opinion, you have your views, you have your dreams. You even have your aspirations. Well, why not share them with me on Generation Talk? I'm Mohammed Islam. Let's talk. Indeed, a very interesting and um, uh, very uh, pioneering uh, idea that was uh, by Mr. Islam, that was presented on our channel here uh, years ago. Um, Ms. Hadayit, uh, can you tell us more what do we expect here from the coming generations to learn from the legacy of uh, our late uh, great presenter and uh, icon, Mr. Islam? I think you already uh, have learned a lot because you're, you're doing a great job, uh, Nile TV. Yeah. I, I mean, no, the, the new generation. No, no, but here. I'm speaking about those <laughs> yes. who knew Muhammad yes, Islam yes. and who were trained by he Muhammad. He was very influential. He did influence in each one of us uh, yeah. to a great extent. Yeah, and uh, I see it uh, vividly. Indeed. And uh, the success of Nile TV proves that those who have imprinted on its... Uh, 
its fabric, its soul, mm -hmm. uh, have succeeded. So I think Muhammad Islam and maybe others, which I don't know their names, uh, have done a great job to make uh, this uh, channel uh, an international channel, not yeah. a local channel. And uh, I think the more, uh, I mean, I see a lot Nile TV in terms of following mm. the news of the world, because sometimes mm. channels don't cover properly mm. everything. So uh, I switch sometimes to mm. Nile TV. Uh, and this is excellent because you have to be on top of the mm. the news, not uh, following the news. You have to be Indeed. on top of the news. Mm. And uh, well, so Muhammad did a very good job. And as everybody mentioned, his English was uh, impeccable, as they say <laughs> yes. mm, in French. Mm. And um, I hear that he used to correct the English of the English teachers yeah. in school. <laughs> So I, yeah. I wonder this talent, hmm. I mean, he came from, as Ahmed Fawzi said, from a very aristocratic family, hmm. from a feudalist family. His uh, grandfather was Ali Basha Islam, hmm. his father Tosun Islam and his mother Madiha Mazhar. Yes. Um, how come this so Egyptian rooted uh, hmm. gentleman master the English language as yes. a lord. Mm. I mean, this is really unbelievable. Yes. Indeed. It's talent. Indeed. Probably it's talent mm. and the love of the English language. Yes, indeed, and that would always be remembered through the different generations and always the legacy and the name of our late uh, dear Mr. Muhammad Islam would be remembered by uh, the uh, generations uh, to come uh, because of his um, uh, legacy and his love uh, to uh, uh, be a good presenter in English and his love for the language itself. Can I just add something? Yes, please. I would like Nile TV to join hands with me and with a group of uh, journalists mm -hmm. and broadcasters who believe that Muhammad Islam deserves to be honored. Indeed. And I hope that the president will decide sometime in mm. the future to honor him with a medal. Yeah, indeed. He deserves all because the first for his October war uh, contribution. Yes. He was the voice of Egypt in English. Mm -hmm. And secondly, for all the effort he did to make Nile TV a great station. Indeed, uh, Ms. Hadet Abdel Nabi, uh, our journalist uh, and uh, of course the cousin of our late uh, uh, dear uh, Mr. Mohammed Islam, uh, thank you very much uh, for being with us and uh, for being our uh, guest for today. And uh, we'll leave you now, our dear viewers, with this um, uh, ex ex excerpt from the death of a princess, which uh, was uh, indeed uh, one of the work of uh, our dear uh, Mr. Mohammed Islam, which was the production of the year 1980. Let the West understand our problems. We are a society in a delicate balance. On the one hand, there's Islam, the teachings of the Holy Quran, a way of life that has remained unchanged since the days of the Prophet, 14 centuries, unchanged. On the other hand, there's oil. He is immensely influential. In his own country, a power behind the throne, a man to reckon with. You're the consumers. Let's call him Side Badra. But how to strike that balance? That's what your press fails to understand. Look at the way we are treated in your newspapers. Take that story of the princess. They said about that very... Thank you.